Yeah, we'll just get started. Uh, so, hey, everyone, welcome back to Worship Gear Collective, a channel all about the worship musician, by the worship musician, for the worship musician. And I still have him ripping off Tommy Boy every introduction. We'll get back to it eventually. You might notice the third face in here. We have our man, Jake. Welcome. Oh, oh, oh. There <laughs> Quick from all that CrossFit. <laughs> Hello. What up, man? I know we've already been talking for a few minutes, so we'll do the generic thing of uh, welcome. Good to Good to see you, man. Yeah, dude. Glad to be here. Super stoked. Yeah, dude. It's cool. We've been, uh, like I said earlier, we've been following your stuff for a while. Actually, I bought a Yay Sports hat off that website. I, okay. Dude, <laughs> I was talking about that with my wife. And I showed, like, I was, we were, uh, I saw it on New Year's Day. And yeah. I was like, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's me to a T. Like, I'm a big, as you can tell in my Taylor Swift shirt, big, big sports boy. Yeah, so, big fan of the spurts. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's funny. I used to do CrossFit competitively up here. So, oh. Yeah, I mean, I didn't place well, if you could tell by the everything about me. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> That's okay. But, it's, um, like, it's a fake sport anyway. I feel like I've always said that. Like, when I would, like, I remember there was, like, this, like, one camp I was helping out at. And this little girl, like, looked at me. She's like, do you run a lot? I was like, does it look like I run a lot? <laughs> I was just like, if you see me running, you should also probably run. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. really go hard, like, fast in the other direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like a kid insult is the most honest insult because like they'll hit you in a way you didn't like john mulaney had like you have high fa high waisted feminine hips and it's like ah so one thing i'm sensitive about like <laughs> i'll just find it man i had a kid one time tell me my torso was too small for my arms and it was a i didn't Dang. well yeah i was working at i worked at a sporting goods store oh yeah <laughs> so ridiculous but they're like literally the one thing i'm insecure about my body now. yeah my <laughs> torso thank you my polish jeans failed me again but <laughs> I mean, we could talk about that all day, but so, Hey, we are, as you know, a worship channel. So we do a lot of the generic worship things. We try to branch outside of them, but, uh, wanted to get to know you, man. We like your stuff. You do music full-time, correct? Full-time. Yeah. So what is that? Like, what does a week look like for you? Like, great question. Uh, so I, uh, yeah. So right now I'm kind of starting to ramp up the like, travel season kind of stuff. My travel season tends to be like kind of all year. Uh, and it seems like in music world, like, you know, end of the year around Christmas time, it starts to slow down. So mm -hmm. I'm just now kind of ramping back up. I was in, uh, Alabama this past weekend, uh, heading oh, nice. to Colorado, Colorado on Thursday. So I'm pretty busy with traveling and that's, that's going to kind of picking up quite a bit now. And, and these days I'm doing quite a bit of remote tracking. Uh, that's kind of been a, a dream of mine to do for a really, really long time. And that's kind of starting to pick up a whole lot. So I do a lot of that. And then uh, I'm like contract musician at my church mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in Dallas proper, uh, you know, like actual Dallas. I live in yeah. Dallas. It's in Dallas proper. Yeah. Uh, the, so it's called Watermark Church. I'm there every, most Sundays and I play at the porch, which is a Tuesday night, like young adults ministry thing. Nice. So um, I stay pretty busy doing all that stuff. And then, yeah, just I actually like coach at my CrossFit gym. Just kind of like stay out of the house for a little while. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it can kind of uh, like there's a lot of times like the music, full time music. It's like, oh, what am I gonna do today? And yeah. you know, some of the some of the like little things on the side are really fun. And mm -hmm. where do you find the time? <laughs> oh, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> and this thing, I'm trying to like do time management really well. Uh -huh. uh, so and that's going decently okay, uh, which I is great um go ahead yeah, I, was, I feel like that's the thing everybody including myself always like complain about just like oh, i just don't have time for this i don't have time for that but right. there's time, <laughs> just... yeah, there's time. Yeah. and uh <laughs> and now these days i started a, a company with a guy i've been playing music with for over 10 years um we started a company called the way of worship and we're leading cohorts nice. and and discipling guys and 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 male men and women who are coming through for songwriting and worship leading and electric guitar stuff it's so we started that 15 days ago 16 days ago congratulations so, uh, yeah that's awesome very yeah very, very exciting stuff so we're uh so that's keeping me super busy yeah so. so how long have you been do so is it all worship pretty much all yeah. worship for everything uh like what i do yeah yeah, pretty much. I've I've done a couple like pop projects in the past. Uh, some of my buddies have a pop band called Joan, and um, they I played on their record that came out last year, 
Nice. And, uh, so that's I've and I've done stuff with them over the years. So, um, but for, other than that, it's pretty much like church music. Yeah. Nice. And so, how long we've we been doing it for? Full time. Uh, full time, two years. Uh, but I was uh, full time at a church for almost ten years. Uh, so, kind of music's always been a thing uh, mm -hmm. for the last for the last like fifteen or sixteen years or so. It's pretty much been nice. And, um, yeah, so, but the last two years, my, my wife and I felt like we, we needed to make a full-time run at music and it's going pretty well. Is yeah, she a musician too? Uh, she is not a professional musician, uh, but she was a, a worship or not a worship artist. She was a music theater major in college and okay. phenomenal vocalist, great worship leader. Um, she sounds like my wife. Yeah, yeah. Right. My she, wife is not, she's the math person. Uh, <laughs> no. Smarter than you valedictorian <laughs> jack a 1.7 gpa yeah i got in on the make-a-wish program in college <laughs> yeah my wife is is way smarter than me and way more organized and way less add so mm -hmm. uh, but she's she works uh remotely and yeah we're just living our life man we're having a blast yeah dude. Awesome. So, does she like travel with you too whenever you travel sometimes no dude that's yeah. the thing that we we've, we've talked about over the years uh i think when we were dating she like came and did like a couple gigs with us and and uh we were still in college at the time and i think after the weekend she was like is this all you do on these weekends <laughs> <laughs> and it's like pretty much because yep. you know you get it's like when you're playing like a dean now or like a youth conference thing or whatever mm -hmm. it's like you have you all in on a weekend what like eight, seven hours of work maybe less 100 percent right. Yeah, and she's like, so you literally work for seven hours, you're hunting for food, you're taking naps, and you're like, you know, sitting mm -hmm. on your freaking butt doing nothing. And I'm like, 100%. That's it. That's, it. Yeah. That's pretty much the yep. gig. And she's like, this is the last one I ever go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, smart. But, but every now and then, like, she'll come on one if there's like a, yeah. we're going on a cruise in a couple weeks. And uh, oh, that's I'm sweet. playing on that. So she's obviously right. going on a cruise, I think. 100%. Taking the Duesenberg. Actually, I was going to ask what kind of guitars you have. What kind? I knew I knew about the DZ. Yeah, dude. But... So I've got uh, they're all behind me actually. So I've got uh, actually not all of them. I have a uh, the Duesenberg is a number one. It's been number one for a year and a half or so, maybe a little less. And I just it's actually the second one that I've owned. Um, the first one I owned it was a uh, I was working on uh, as a worship pastor for a student ministry, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't play that much electric guitar so i had this like amazing electric guitar and i was like i'm just not playing it like it's right. just like sitting in the case so i sold it and then um i had a sir uh mateus asado model uh, last year and i just didn't vibe with it it's freaking awesome but it just wasn't for me and a buddy was selling his fullerton cc and i was like i think that's the one that i need to get yeah, and, and I like I remember going to his office and picking it up out of the case and just holding it and go. It's just like that the, the hammer of Thor. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's number one. It's been number one for a while, and uh, that's that one stays. Um, yeah. I, you know, and y'all get it. Yeah, <laughs> it could change, right? Uh, but it's I love it. Um, and then I've got like a little parts caster situation that kind of started its life as a J Mascus, and it is essentially just like every ideal modification you'd want for a uh for a parts caster right. mastery bridge well, trim killer all parts neck lambertone distrettos all the guts are replaced it's got a beautiful pick guard on it and it's i've paid a thousand bucks for it so oh, that's I'm, crazy yeah dude it's yeah. freaking nuts so yeah. i uh, you know those parts caster things you it's kind of a trap because you just dump so much money into them and you lose a lot so i, I I'm super fortunate to have that one <laughs> I might be the only person in the world who has ever came out on top with a parts caster. I, uh, really? dude, I had a uh, John saw it. So I used to yeah. have this, uh, it was a telly parts caster. Uh, it was like a French in body. Um, yeah. and with, a uh, had a Porter 90 in the bridge, a bare knuckle P90 in the neck. Nice. And then I had a like roasted maple neck from Warmoth, all that stuff. Right. I, <laughs> I, I, I got, so I just got a Veritas Riverton. Nice. Um, and it's pretty much as close to like a custom build as you can get. And it's the first, like the prototype Riverton. Okay. 
like the one not like <laughs> it's yeah it's, and i ended up getting it from a guy off of reverb yeah, i was like you, all I right literally the first person to ever like make it on, a, on a party potentially the last two yeah potentially right. the last <laughs> yeah that's that i had kind of a there's actually another uh jay maskets back there that it just I, I was like man if i'm gonna keep this thing around like i just want i don't want to like i don't want to spend five or six hundred dollars on top of what i already have into it it's just right like, so good on you man yeah <laughs> um, and then the last one I've got, or I've got an acoustic, I've got an Eastman that's killer. Uh, mm. And then I actually, kind of my proudest, probably my proudest acquire, uh, acquisition, I guess, in a long time, is uh, I got a, it's either an early 80s or a late 80s Bernie Les Paul Custom. And that that's thing thick. just, oh, dude, it freaking screams, man. It's yeah, Bernie's are cool. Gosh, it's, I've always wanted one. Right. And, you know, the Bernie thing is rad because it's like, it's essentially a freaking Gibson Les Paul custom, like yeah. from that era. It's part yeah, they were made part. in Japan, right? Yep, they're made in Japan. Yeah. I I believe they were made in a Fernandez factory or an Ibanez factory. I can't remember, but I think they're the Ibanez factory. Yeah, so that you know they did the Tokai, they had Greco yeah. and Bernie and uh, you know, whatever uh, Orville, mm -hmm. all those other weirdo brands, and it's just they're killer, man. Like <laughs> I paid a thousand bucks for it locally. A guy just had it. I went over to his house. That's sick. Yeah, and he the th the funniest part about it is like, I you know I went into it and I was like, I'm talking to my wife. I'm like, babe, I know this is kind of a lot of cash right now. It's like year end. I've kind of spent all my money on gear, and, right. and I was like, I think I gotta get this one, babe. And she was like, all right, see if you can haggle him down because I think he had it for like eleven hundred. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna do my best. And I was calling my buddy Ethan. I was like, how do I freaking wheel and deal on these vintage guitars? And he goes, you gotta look, you gotta like open up the cavity, you gotta like look it in, blah blah blah. And I was like, all right. And I'm like going in poker face. I'm kind of, I'm trying to be a tool to this guy. I'm like, yeah, man, I'll look at it. <laughs> and I pull it. He he just like pulls it off his rack, and I hold it. And I'm just in my head. I'm like, gosh, dang it, dude, this thing is so sick. So then I go, yeah, this is really nice, man. I really like it. And then he had a plexi like head like a hundred watt plexi and he knew what he was doing it wasn't his first rodeo the guy, guy freaking knew he was like you want to plug it in and i'm like freaking twist my arm bro of course i want to <laughs> plug it into an ox box and just like turn the, the marshal up and i was like that's the sound that's it so yep. it's a uh, i paid 1050 for it because it didn't have a case and i love that guitar dude it's that's a sick guitar. so sick I know uh, HW from like Tone Junkie loves all those things too. Oh yeah, yeah he did a yeah he did a video not too long ago where he was like talking about like how he would rate his guitars, uh -huh. and a lot of those ones like you know like the Greco like, like the Takais and stuff like yeah. that like he was just like he was like those are like a ten out of ten like never leaving. It like, really are man it's so yeah. weird. It's like so weird and I I I there was a a guy locally that was selling a a Greco of the same roughly the same era. And uh, this was I I'd kind of done the research on like lawsuit and I think from what I understand the like law I have a lawsuit because it has the split diamond thing it doesn't oh, have yeah. a connection so I think yeah. it's a lawsuit and the Grecos have those god awful freaking headstock logos they're just terrible yeah and, uh, they're terrible and but the guy was like I think it was seven hundred bucks for the Greco yeah. and it had market pickups i was like i need to get it and the guy freaking ghosted me and i could not stop thinking about it for a month mm. i was so pissed that's and, the worst oh it was so terrible but i i you know this one was more expensive but man i'm so grateful it's like it's one of the best sounding and best playing guitars i've ever had like oh yeah totally stock like the pickups are a little microphonic so you can play off of that a little bit it's just mm. Mm, so sick that's so, sick those are the guitars man well, that's pretty sweet yeah, and I've seen you have a pretty crazy board. I think all of the, the all of the worship people are going to love this. I figured this would maybe segue into a couple of questions. First off, can we have your Mercury X presets or your Microcosm presets? Yeah. <laughs> For the love of God, can we please get those so people stop asking you? <laughs> I don't even answer the Q&As anymore when they say that because I will give them away at some point. I'm just trying to figure out a way to do it. Like the Especially the Mercury, you can't give the Microcosm away. Which I just sold it, so end of an era, baby. Oh, already? Uh, all done. Well, not already. I've had it for. Oh, like you had it. For... Okay, I've that's long enough. A year and a half. Like that's it's long been enough. a long time. So, but the Mercury X man is, um, it's so great, and I'm just trying to figure out the best way to like upload them and all that stuff. And also, like, I don't like giving stuff away that I just don't feel 
like settled into mm-hmm. you know yeah so i'm just trying to like do the <laughs> really fine tuning and then i'll just go like all right you can have it whatever we literally just had like our first question about something similar to that on like one of our videos not too long ago like some dude was just like so when are those like Strymon presets coming? I was like, yeah. we made it in passing of the joke. We're like, yeah, we'll give away some Strymon presets, and he just was like, where are they at, bro? Not here yet. <laughs> and it's like yeah. beggars can't be choosers, man. You gotta slow down a little bit, you know, right. like pump the brakes. So yeah, yeah. I'll uh, I'll give them away at some point. They sound they're sounding awesome, and the Mercury X is freaking beautiful. That's a cool yeah My, microcosm. You can't upload presets, and uh, I've basically had the same presets since I got the pedal. Cause it's like you dial it in and it's just like, sounds, it all sounds like magic. Like it's all oh, yeah. really beautiful. Sound. Did you replace it with something or not yet? Yeah. So I'm trying to, you know, if you've been following along, I've, it's been kind of like battle of the chorus pedal and modulation thing for me lately. And I just, you know, part of like, I try to be really hesitant. Like when I speak about stuff and like in gear on my Instagram, but yeah. I'm like just a really excitable dude. Like if I get really stoked on something, I'll just say, you know, and uh, right. but part of like, you know, like I posted on my story a while back of like, this is basically the chorus sound I'm looking for. And it was a microcosm chorus. It sounded so good in my yeah. room with my monitors. And it was like a clean setting. I was just like, oh my gosh, it's just like, excuse me. It's like stereo. It's huge. It sounds beautiful. And then I took it out. I think I played at church and I just heard things that, that I hadn't heard. Like it was kind of, uh, so you know how some choruses can have that, like almost sound like a phaser, like yeah. it's just, yeah. and it's a little throaty. It was that. And I was like, I don't like that. And I tried to mess with the resonance and all that stuff. The vibrato sounded nuts, but the, um, uh, the chorus was just, I couldn't settle into it. So, um, I'm pretty, pretty crammed for space on my board. So I'm having to be real economical about stuff. So, yeah. Um, what I'm doing is I'm pulling the microcosm off. It's gone or it's here right now, but it's, you know, going to be gone. And uh, <laughs> I'm actually going to, uh, change how I use the H90. So one side will be uh chorus. Um, and I'll just use a tricera chorus, however, which I love. Yeah. Like that's a good jealous. I'm, yeah. I'm jealous that? of that pedal. <laughs> Bro, it's the best. It's I have the H9, but yeah. I want the H90. I just don't have space for an H90. Right. It could so replace, that. I mean, like. It's so good. Like it's it's just perfect. Uh, yeah. Highly recommend. And it's it's a, a sticker shock, but like the value that you get is insane. It's stupid. Like, it's ridiculous. So yeah. Um. So H ninety one side's just gonna be uh I think Tricera chorus and the vibrato sounds really good on that and I love tri I love tri chorus. I'm not a huge vintage chorus guy. Um. It's like like all the Bucket Brigade stuff. Like I've heard a couple that I like, but overall it's just not my thing. I'm a right. huge fan of like big tri-chorus and like lush kind of thing um and then i actually bought a volante to be my second delay and oh. carries the heavy lifting for uh nice so i there love you it go. yeah yeah we're i'm still i just started i went from the helix to uh i, I went to ace i went tonex single ACS yeah. one and then i went to the stomp with your preset for quite a while i want i want you to know that, he, that all this happened in a matter of like a week wow <laughs> I had I sold I had twelve <laughs> guitars, sold six of them, sold my oh. helix. Yeah, I just was over it. Oh. Mm-hmm. Goodness gracious! Like you wait, so you were over helix. You just needed a new thing. Yeah, you know I what I loved about the helix, and I still love about the helix is like, and quad court. I mean, I love it all for the same reason everyone loves all of it. My buddy is a touring musician. He works for like big names, like Corey Taylor names and stuff. And so like. Oh. He loves like the axe effects and stuff for like his purpose, but like, man, I was an MD at a church for like a little while. And I was like, I just like, I don't love the some of the effects that I had. Like, it's it's drives were a little lackluster for me personally, and it's like, that was the big thing. The amps were great, you know. I, yeah. So I, I when I wanted to go, I never had one. I've always been modelers and computers. I've never had actual amps before. Um, I grew up playing metal you know, and it's seven wow. and drops, it drop a, so wow. it was crap like that and stuff. So yeah, then I ended up going back to the stomp <laughs> after, you know, thousands of dollars and many headaches and unfortunate phone calls for Patrick here. <laughs> yeah, right. Dude, the stomp is so killer. It's I, really good. It's, I, I mean, I was on it for like a while, like I think almost a year actually. And I just love it. Like the way it takes drives, everything. 
The only thing about it that, and it, maybe it is something you can notch out, but the only thing about it that I was like, ah, it sounds, it's just the only thing. It's, I, I feel like there's just kind of this like low mid buildup, <clears throat> like mm-hmm. just the processing in the unit itself. And that's yeah. just what I heard. And I heard it more of when I like stack tracks and stuff. I'm like, oh, it just seems yeah. like a lot in that area. Um, and I, I, in fact, I was super happy with it, but mine actually malfunctioned. There's a, apparently a known issue that the right output specifically will start distorting and it's just mm-hmm. the right output gets faulty, which I didn't know about. Yeah. I had, dude, it was a disaster. All the people, uh, all the sound folks at my church were so mad. They were actually really amazing, but we were just like, what is that freaking sound? And they're like yeah. running it back to ears console. They're running it back to front of house. They're replacing lines and everything and it it was bad like really noticeable um and then finally uh i think i was talking to ethan and he was like it could be this and then i tested it and sure enough it was that so got rid of the stomp and it was just an opportunity to go tone x and um i was like they're rad bro i'm blown blown away like i love them i've been wanting (laughs) this box (laughs) <laughs> oh no <laughs> this is the one i'm gonna die on this is like the <laughs> this is the hill i'm I'm willing to die on hey, let's go i want a tone x so bad but dude i can't get over the whole no stereo amps thing like i i want like if if i if the tone x came out and they were like you can run two different amps at, at the even just you know it's just like oh that's that's it yeah i would have bought it like no problem. Not even thought about it. Bought it right away. Right. And it seems like all of these things keep coming out that just don't even like the new uh, the new Kemper player doesn't have it. You know, I'm just over here waiting. I'm like, I just want something like an ACS one yep. that does profiling. Yeah, and I can run yeah. st- like so stereo. Dude, I totally get it. And and it, the thing about them is it takes up so they they are huge. Like yeah, they're they're thick boys and mm-hmm. i uh i literally had to plan my whole board around them and oh, yeah. um but it was kind of one of those things that was just like i'm just gonna give them a shot worst case scenario i'll just sell them like worst case scenario it's not because it's not that hard like i feel like a lot of guys feel like they have to make this massive mental and investment of like, you know i gotta hear more things and it's like i gotta spend a lot of money and it's a lot of money I, i'll give them that but it's just like it's this whole like build up thing. And then it's, but like at the end of the day, it's like, dude, just freaking buy them. And if you don't like them, a lot of places, especially if you buy them from Guitar Center, you go plug in at home. Nope, don't like it. And then take it literally. That's right what John did with Sweet One. Yeah. <laughs> mine, mine had an issue with, so I, I like to just generally run my board, all my wet effects after my amps, if I can. Yeah. Into the front of my amps. And the yeah, tone. Brain free. Go ahead. Wait. No, you should be. I have issues. I understand. It's me. I'm praying for you. You're in my quiet time. All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, it's been a good podcast. All I wanted to know was in his prayers. That's it. I made it. <laughs> um, no, I mean, but with the Tone X, you couldn't, you can't run stereo into the front of it. So I was like, I'll try it. And I was getting this weird harmonic overtone thing. Like every profile I tried just with having tons of issues. Like I reset up my guitar. I switched stuff around, went mono into the front of it, could not get rid of it. And like sent my buddy yeah. works at Sweetwater. And he's like, yeah, that sounds like a faulty. We had to send it back because it was like busted. That's a huge bummer. Yeah. So then that's what, that's ultimately what moved me away from it. But like, I already trying to figure out like, if you want a Juliana chorus, I'll trade you something, but <laughs> I'll sell and get a tone X. No, I mean, it's, they're, they're awesome. For, for me, it's just like, like, I, 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 what's that? I said they do sound great. Oh man, they're awesome. And they feel good. Like that was one thing I was, yeah. I was watching an HW video about them and he was just like, these things are the truth. And it's like, they sound great. They, they're flexible. They're tweakable. It's like everything, kind of everything you want Kemper to be right now. Yeah. And he goes, and the thing that's most impressive is they just feel good. Like, well, yeah. And like the other big thing with like the Tone X's too is that like, so like the profile player or whatever just came out from Kemper. Yeah. Tone X is like like what like two thirds the price or something. Dude, I, <sighs> bro, I was I was like, the thing with Kemper for me is like I'm like guys put out a Kemper too. Yeah. Like your tech. It's been like fifteen years. I know. It's like. The thing is, is back in the day, they sounded awesome because it was like the literal best option. 
and they really sound good. They really do. Yeah, they still sound good. Yeah, they sound great. It's just, a, it's for me, it's a compression thing. Like, the input compression yep. is insane. It's just, like, it's way too glassy. Like, way too glassy. Mm-hmm. I, I want that, like, I don't want that, like, smooth breakup. I want, like, rowdy. Like, I want it to sound yeah. like, like it's getting out of control. The amp's getting out of yeah. control. Um, yeah. There's that old, like, JHS video of Drew Shirley doing his, like, rig rundown. And all of this is, like, it sounds like it's going to explode. And it's like, yeah. how well my stuff is not like it's going to explode. Yeah. And, um, the, the Kemper thing is just like, guys, like there, you have so much competition right now. Yeah. And the thing is, is they've cornered the market on Kemper guys. It's just like, pfft, like, oh, those guys aren't leaving either. No, they're like, Kemper is the best that, that's ever been. You're yep. never going to beat it. That's it. And it's like, I, the reality is, it's, it's like, that might be true that it's the best, but you've got a lot of stiff competition, like a lot. For four hundred dollars, I'll I'll take the gamble on four hundred bucks. And to me, it just doesn't seem like they're innovating as much. Like you said, like the profile play or, or whatever. Like it's just, you run a single amp, and then you get like some you get a couple effects, right? It's just like the way I see it, it's like I don't really care about the effects. You can right. keep the effects. I just want the amps because right. if I had, I'd just shove it on that board right, right. there, the, where the, I'm already the, running everything. Right, but it's killer. Like they, I guess they Kemper, which is fine. It's a fair argument. Yeah. That Kemper's like we don't care about the praise and worship guys. We just don't. Yeah. And I that respect that. Totally respect it. Mm-hmm. Totally yeah. get it. Because like, if you look at like who's using Kemper's, it's like it's guys that are like, I like delay. I like reverb. I like the amp turned up. That's it. And it's just yep. like sick. And it's like rock and roll. And dude, like, re, like Kemper high high gain stuff freaking crushes. It's awesome. Oh yeah, I mean, metal scene is still using Kemper. I think uh, I we haven't gotten into it yet, John, but we're gonna knock, like knocked loose. Yeah. Knocked loose, bro. Oh, dude, I saw them live when they were in Detroit last. Oh, dude, was it insane? <laughs> it. So I got to go backstage for it because my buddy who works, it's friend, the tour manager for that whole uh-huh. thing. Shout out to him. He's re- requested to be unnamed, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he. Um, yeah, dude, it was motionless and white with the headliner, knocked uh-huh. loose, and then uh alpha wolf opened which i missed which i was bummed about and then some gent band i can't remember the name of but like a, a well-known gent band like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a periphery level like sure, legacy sure. guy sure. dude knocked loose was the most gnarly i mean like it felt like literally a wall of sound hit you and then like kicked you when you got down and laughed at you as you fell yeah but it yeah, was yeah. like you're like yeah we're close. <laughs> <laughs> dude i love that band I'm, oh I'm, they're so good I'm a metalhead too. I started playing metal music when I was in high school, and uh, mm. that's that's where I cut my teeth. And, yeah, uh, it's it's just I still always I'll always love it. I'll always love it. I was a vocalist in a Suicide Silence cover band in high school. <laughs> <laughs> that you were also a vocalist during the uh, <laughs> I forgot about that uh, the plaza thing at school. So we went to, exams. <laughs> went to a little Christian school and they had something called hardcore at the plaza. It was the oh. night before silent time for the, uh, for exam week. Oh, and they had not had live music in like a few years. And there was four of us who all played metal. We oh. got together and we just put on the, the music director for the college with a metal head at heart, hardcore kid from the seventies. Oh. He gave us full permission to use any piece of gear we wanted from the, the whole music department of the college. So we were, we got to 116 decibels. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. 60 feet from the library where 90% of the students were <laughs> who don't like metal. <laughs> is, oh yeah, 100%. 100%. I was yeah. in the library and I remember going like, this is awesome. <laughs> we played like, we played like second in Sebring, like bring me the horizon, yeah, bear yeah, tooth, yeah. like, and it was just like the most stupid, like, I mean, we but wore like, but you oh yeah. Fun. I had on Stranger Things booty shorts and like a the Star Wars like Christmas <laughs> sweater. It was great. Yeah, that our first uh, the my guys back in back in high school, dude. We played my uh, drummer was Catholic, and every year there was like a Catholic convention in Little Rock, and he uh, was like, "Guys, I got us our first gig," and I was like, "Sick, where is it?" And he's like, "Catholic convention." <laughs> <laughs> And it it's was like, time for heavy worship bro and we they brought us in like after like the service and we put at that point we were just oh, an no. under, we were an under oath cover band in 2000 <laughs> wow that's great and we like dude we played we we played a lot of norma jean too mm-hmm. and we just like 
in front of all these Catholic kids that were just like, what is happening to us? And it's just ah. like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but then after, we, we played for like 20 minutes and afterwards everyone was like, that was awesome. That was the coolest thing we've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, we had fun, but man, those, oh, those types of gigs are, are, are weird. <laughs> It's yeah, so when they're not expecting what you're doing, it's an interesting experience. <laughs> right, it's yeah. like, oh, this is whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a, a pop punk show, and then we'll get back on track. It, up up here, there's a, a college town bar, and okay. like my buddy, the the guys were on Solid State, like one of the middle bands. Okay. And it's, I mean, it's like exactly cookie cutter pop punk. My buddy's band, great album release show. They get on stage, they play their first song, and they go, well, as you can tell. Clearly, the person booking didn't pay attention to who we are. <laughs> like, ah, yikes, dude! It was, it was. I mean, it was so much fun because they were like hardcore, like traditional metalcore, and it was oh. just in the middle of like pizza party, pop punk time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. That's yeah. awesome. I'm glad okay. we jumped into that. That was fun. Yeah, <laughs> we needed to. Um, and because we had talked about metal before on, on Instagram. Yes, so it was overdue that conversation. Yep. Shred because he bled. Um, <laughs> so actually, I do have a question because of your tone X's. And this is, I think, I've heard you talk about it before. That's a big thing in our channel. I think it's a good segue to the rest cool. of what we want to talk about. Cool. Uh, so the tone X's are not the most expensive thing in the world. Nope. So as someone, though, like, we can all sit here and go, our boards are X amount of dollars. They are expensive and stuff like that. What it sounds like you have the ability just to go, well, function is over sticker value. Like, I don't need the nicest thing to be the most expensive thing in the world. How did you land on, I mean, I know you kind of touched on it already, but like, was that at all a concern because you hadn't played it yet and it was more affordable than the other ones or not even no, a thought? For you? Not really. I mean, like, obviously like I'm not rich, like, but you know, at some point, like being any type of like contract work, you have to be smart with your money. Right. Yeah. Like, and the reality is, is it's like, there's this thing called taxes that we all have to pay and uh, you know, any smart, business person, especially contractors, the, if you can either keep your money in assets yeah. or give it to the government, what are you going to pay? No brainer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no brainer. It's like, duh, the, the tax code there, so use it. So I just am like, I know roughly how much I need to spend. That's good. And, you know, like, I just can't, like, I can't go without, like, it's, a, a, the it's your job. That, it's my job. Like, and at the risk of sounding braggy, it's like, I, I play too much to go without. It's just, it. right. yeah. And I'm, I'm super, super pumped and thankful for it. my wife. And I just, um, we just celebrated nine years marriage. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. And, uh, thank you. She's the best. And she literally is the best. And it's just like, you know, she gets it at this point. Mm -hmm. She's like, this is your job. Like you. And the cool thing about her is she's like, if you sound bad and you make me look bad, th this is going to be bad yeah. for you. Like, don't do it. <laughs> So Good. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like awesome. So, you know, the Tonex thing was just like, it was just the right opportunity. And I was like, mm -hmm. dude, I, it's, it's no loss, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. I can't lose. Because if I, and I have a buddy that has, you know, GC Pro, or whatever, and I hit him up and I got a little bit of a discount, which I, I probably could have gotten my own anyway, if I like contacted But still, it's always good to help out a homie or get help from a homie. Yeah. So my buddy was like, yeah, let me see what the pricing was. And I think I saved like a hundred bucks. And, yeah. you know, worst case scenario you literally go yep not a fan and just go right back to the guitar center and tournament and mm -hmm. then i go great so now i just need to go buy an H hx stomp and that was the plan mm -hmm. from the start oh uh, so you were gonna go back to hx if you weren't oh yeah 100 percent. it was not even a question uh okay but yeah for me it's just like i've you know it's it's kind of a like a, a bit of like a you know I, i've been playing music for a long time and what i'm doing right now is a dream like frankly yeah for sure so, I'm super grateful and, 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 and I I'm honored and blessed and like super humble that I get to use this stuff. And part of it is just like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. Like might, well. kind of the, I might as well. And cause this is my job. Like how I sound is, is reflective right. of like, you know, why people should that, keep, but. keep you so, employed. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of the mentality of spend money to make money. And, uh, I would just yeah. rather spend the money on things that I know sound good. And if, if they don't, they gone, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So kind of playing off of that really quick, like what is, how do you approach it? Like a, like the gear you buy, right? It's like when you're like looking at like everything that's coming out there, it's just like, what are the things that you're looking for in it? Like, so how are you approaching that? Yeah. And then like, how do you approach 
like your sound like what do you yeah. identify as like this is my sound like this is right. what I like yeah man like i've um I, i'm really picky with delays like really really picky yeah um, there's a very specific thing that i want and the like that's kind of like the with overdrives you know it's a little different because i can But, let's just be real like every overdrive is like a copy of like one of like four circuits so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like as long as it's like as long as the compression feels right or the lack right now the lack thereof it's just right. like cool i'll make it work but like with delays i am so so picky like i want things to you know i talk about it a lot i do that dotted eighth into eighth stack and two different textures I keep the mix on the first one a little bit higher than the second and the feedback is really long because I want that like it's it's literally like the um is it Andy Timmons right that does the t the halo delay yes thing? Yeah. yeah the keely or, yeah the keely yeah the keely yeah. one like that's kind of like like that's the sound that I go for right I, I've been doing that for that's a cool pedal years oh yeah I've never had one but they sound awesome Mm -hmm. And I'm a big Tom, Tom Bukovac fan, so when there's that video yep. of him playing with it, and he's like, yeah. man, that sounds awesome, man. That's cool. Like, yeah. I'm like, hey, if Tom likes it, I'm probably going to like I'm it. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and that, you know, like, there's just, I'm really, really picky with delays. So with the with delays, when I got the H90, I was like, this is it. Like, I just don't know how I it can get yeah. better. Than this. Yeah. Um, and reverbs, I'm, you know, it's just, I'm basically the pickiest about delays. Um, and overdrives, I'm just in a phase where it's like, I know what I like, I know what I don't like. And if it's kind of anywhere, you know, outside of that, like there's a lot of grace there is essentially yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but you can I, make most things sound good. I can make most things work. Um, yeah. You know, like if it was like my board failed or something and I needed a bar or my overdrive, like short circuited or whatever, if someone mm -hmm. was like, here's a protein, like it wouldn't be my favorite thing in the world, but I could just make it work. Like I could just plug it in and be fine. Um, <laughs> So no disrespect to Brown, I promise. It's just no, no, that's thank you for that. That's all I needed. We can continue. <laughs> I, I have a protein. I know. <laughs> I, I love I know. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's it's not my thing, man. Like it's just yeah. it's too much compression. And I, I mean, I have this right here. It's, I'm really not prepared, you know. Right. Um, this is <laughs> my uh, my rehouse 30th anniversary with the EP booster on the on this nice. side that mm -hmm. my my buddy Ethan made me. So Tone Ranger Audio shouts out. Dude, I was actually going to reach out to him, but we'll talk about that after. No, we can talk. We got to, we got to put up, we got this. Oh, you know, time. let's, this deserves time. I want to, I've been debating sending in my morning glory and my kilt to put together. Yeah. You can to, do that. He would do yeah. That. Yeah. I think, uh, cause I know this will be a funny joke as we keep going into our, our, our later on segment. Um, I want, I, in my head, that's the perfect praise and worship pedal to have the morning glory and the kilt in one unit. And yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. I think cool. I would solve a lot of <laughs> solve a lot With of ODR one clone ever or whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. And I played it on a session. And I was like, this actually sounds really good. And then I played it live that same day. And I was like, I hate this. It's just oh. too much <laughs> totally different environment. Yeah. Totally different. And um, I just, it's literally no disrespect to Dave and, and, Braxton oh, no, yeah. and all those guys. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. They're just so freaking nice. I had a Brown jazz master for a long time and I loved that guitar nice uh, it's just you know that some things just don't work for guys and for me it's just way too much compression yeah um, 
So then I was really hesitant to get the ODR one, and uh, I got the thirtieth anniversary, and I just absolutely freaking love it. So I like things. I like my you know pretty open for the most part overdrive. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I, w- I don't want a ton of compression. I'd rather compress my guitar and let my drives kind of speak the way they're supposed to. Uh, the exception being Klon. Klon just like super compressed. I don't really like it, but um, yeah, I man. I, I hope that answers your question. That was kind of a long winded way around. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, the only no... the only other thing I'd like to add into that, if that's okay, is just uh, like in terms of like amps. Like, how yeah. do you approach that? Yeah, man. I um, I I want amps that are really harmonic. Um, I just love like, um, I had, a, um, a 2001 bad cat cub 15 R and, uh, I had it for, uh, so it was owned by my, my roommate in college. One of my best friends, he sold it to another one of my best friends. And then I bought it from him. Uh, so the brotherhood I, of the traveling amp. Yeah. It just like stayed right. <laughs> it stayed close until I freaking. Yeah. Um, and I just, it was like my first real amp that I was like absolutely blown away by, you know? Yeah. And it's, so if you know anything about bad cats, yeah, bad cats they were red. made by the person who uh, made matchless, correct? Correct. So, yeah. uh, so Mark Sampson was at, at matchless. I don't think, I can't remember if Mark Sampson founded matchless or not. Um, I'm going to get crucified over that, but I can't remember, <laughs> but Mark Sam, but the Sampson era matchless is like it, right? So, mm-hmm. so Mark Sampson left Matchless, I think late 2000 or early 2001 and, uh, worked at Bad Cat for a few years and then left and started Star. So, um, I had a Samson era Bad Cat, which you could argue is a Matchless in a Bad Cat box. Like, right. and it was the first Cub. So now their Cub series is like their most popular series. I think right. it's Black Cat. But that amp, man, it was so harmonic, and it just sounded so freaking good. Like, it it was really rowdy and punchy and bright in all the right ways. The low end was, like, perfect. It just was literally, like, the most perfect amp ever. And uh, I sold it because I wasn't using it. It literally sat in the road case for years. And um, I sold it because my wife wanted a tattoo. So... Uh, <laughs> I was like, I literally. So cried. you, so you, of course, do that. I mean, it's a brainer. She's like, babe, I really want a tattoo, and I was like, all right, I'll go sell the amp. And I like <laughs> literally cry. I'm not sentimental with gear at all. If it doesn't work, it's gone. Like that's it. So that is respectable. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's like the microcosm, right? It's just like, hey, it was served its time, and I love it, love it, love it, love it. But it's just not meeting my needs, and see you later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I remember putting the amp on the UPS table and walking away with a single tear. <laughs> and it, it just so uh, to answer your question, man, like I just I feel like that is just my biggest reference in the back of my head of just yeah. like I know what that an bad amp cat like because that freaking mm-hmm. bad cat was the best amp ever. And uh, man, I just so that's what I kind of look for, even in modelers. Like yeah. it's not this the only difference, literally the only difference in, in modelers. And uh, obviously, there's good modelers and bad modelers, or good profilers and bad, whatever. But the the biggest difference is no joke is air. That's that's what makes amps work so well is you feel that punch yeah. in the chest. That like yeah. that's the big difference. And when you walk away, if you put it in an ISO box or whatever, you lose the air and it's just in your ears or in the monitors or whatever. Yeah. And it just sounds like an amp. So I just went up with Tonex and with all my modelers. I really want that same punch. I want the mm-hmm. harmonic character. I want the crispy bright thing. And breakup is really important too. Like I don't want that smooth, crisp, like not crispy, but like smooth mm. uh, legato type breakup, if you will. I hate that. I hate it. Hate it. I yeah. want it to get really rowdy and out of control. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, the antithesis of like what a lot of guys in church want to sound like. <laughs> I love yeah, that. Yeah. Not That's saying good... in a negative way, but it's just it is what. It is, it is. It is. Oh, yeah. it's... Okay, so. Two things then. I, I want to transition to our next thing that we've been talking about, but also I wanted to ask you about, and I want to make sure I plug, we, and we talk about the things you do to like yeah. the thing you like the cohorts. And I've seen you talk about before tone consultations. Is that something you still do? No. More? <laughs> Is that, was that a real thing or that a joke? Because it felt no. way, you sold it so well if it's a joke <laughs> that it's I bought it. It's not a joke. Uh, it, okay. It, it, I don't do tone consultations. Uh, I did at first, here's the deal, man. Like I really, my biggest thing with Instagram is I want to help people. Like I remember being 
15 or 16 and just like mm. i wish i had access to all my favorite guitar players you know what i mean yeah you know I, the reality is is people look up to me in a in a what i think is a, a cool way but also like a aim higher kind of way <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah. i'm you know there's like way better guys than me like go look to them but like i i just think like i, I just want to help people so if mm. there's a lower if there's a low barrier of entry for someone to get like to contact me and like ask me a question that's cool i don't care if i've answered it eight million times i'll probably still answer it that's um, cool. We, uh, there's a buddy of mine named Ish. Uh, he's a monster drummer. He plays over at Gateway. He's a freaking absolute dog. And he, um, him and he has like 45,000 followers or something, something crazy. And I was like, dude, do you do sub like subscribe thing on your Instagram? He was like, I will absolutely never do that. Never. That's cool. And I, I feel the same way. Cause I just yeah. want that. There's obviously things that I charge for. And yeah. like core is a big thing and there's probably, and there's some things that we're working on right now that we will charge for. But at the same time, yeah. it's like, I will never go like, Hey man, I'm not going to answer your stupid question about overdrive because you're not paying for it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So the tone t- consultation was such a weird gray area. Yeah. It, it was so, it's so weird. Like, so I was like, I'm already answering DMS and I'm telling people that I'll pay that if they pay me 60 bucks, I'll, you know, tell them that their tone sucks. Yeah, I, I said, just kind of like a weird thing to me. Yeah, I feel like that's, that's like one of the hardest parts about like tone, like a tone consultation kind of thing. In my head, at least, it's just like it's so subjective. Yeah. Right. Because like every part, like like for example, just a great example, like you didn't like you don't like the protein in the way it compresses. I love the protein right. in the way it does that. So it's so subjective, but at the same time, it's also down to like you as the player. Like if you, right. like nobody sounds the same right. and. So like, I, I don't try to emulate anybody else but myself. And so it's like, right. I might sound close to somebody, but right. it's just like, you know, I don't, I don't sound like David Hislop. He sounds completely different. He sounds way better than I do, but it's like, I just, you know, yeah. I, uh, it's so subjective and it's hard to, and whenever yeah. I have talked to anybody who's like, how do you do this? How do you do that? I'm just like, just try to sound like yourself and yeah. sound like what sounds good to you because that's what you're going to be the happiest with. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, you, you just go, I think there's core, core values, if you will, of yep. like guitar tone. And as long as you're meeting that, you're probably just going to sound like yourself. And the rest of it is like up to you. Like I, if yeah. someone asks me if they sound bad, I'll probably go, do you want to know? <laughs> if you have to <laughs> ask you, yeah, like, I'll be honest with you. And I'll tell you, like, I wouldn't sound like that or I wouldn't do that. But yeah. like, you know, like it's just, everything is so different. There's such a a wide spectrum of like what sounds good and what doesn't sound good. And really the bot, the, you know, the bottom line is like, it depends on the context, like, um, freaking, um, Oh, Phoebe, y'all know who Phoebe Bridgers is. I'm not uh, sure. Harrison, the name Harrison, Whitford. Harrison Whitford is her guitar player. He's a monster. Another LA guy with him is, is Mason Stoops, both amazing guitar players. And they sound like real, like rubber bridge, you know, flat wounds, like funky right. kind of thing and big wide tremolo and just sounds old. Yeah. And it's like, that is the coolest sounding guitar tone ever. And then you yeah. go, would it work in the gig that I have? Gig that I have. Mm-hmm. And it's just, the answer is no. So it's like, it sounds cool. It just depends on your context. So yeah, a, a wide range of what's acceptable. And it's like, if there's, if the amp's turned up and it's punching and it's, you know, it's overdriven a little bit, whatever, and you send some good gain into it. It's like, man, mm-hmm. cooking, dude, it sounds great. Yeah, and uh, like all that, like the way I am with like my sound stuff is like I'm always working on it. Like I'm never just like, right. God, I'm a oh, tinker. like, yeah, yeah, like like we did an ACS one video, like how to dial in your ACS one, uh, like yeah. last week, and like we had talked about it. it was just like I'm probably gonna spend another week and a half after this video, right, trying to get this to sound more how. I want it to sound. Right. And then, you know, probably six months from there, I'm going to be like, I want it to sound like a little bit different or whatever. Right. And I'm going to be working on, and it's like, y- you know, changing. yeah. Like I'm, I'm happy to not be happy right. with what it is because then it's just like, it, it keeps me working, keeps me playing totally. and it's just going to keep, you know, making everything better. So 100%. regardless of how good anybody might say it is, it's just like, fine, cool. Thanks. But like, I just, <laughs> it's not where I want it to be yet. <laughs> All right, so you're driving in Indiana. You are on the way to a worship conference, and you're Duesenberg, you're bored, 
your most prized possessions are in the back of your car and you get rear-ended right outside of Sweetwater by Sweetwater. Oh, but, but oh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The bag with all of your patch cables and your power supply and your cables survived because it's in the front seat for whatever reason. Uh, this is a wild scenario. This is a wild scenario. And this is from Ander. Okay. Shout out to where shout out is. I don't think I did it last time. Anderton's uh, YouTube channel does this even better than I do because they have a million followers. Yeah. Um, but the concept that I think is interesting because they're in, you know, a thousand pounds. You had 1500 bucks to get the rig to go play like a youth conference or like something you would do, you know, like you have to go play something with your, your porch team or like your yeah, yeah, watermark yeah. team. What yeah. would be the fifth, like the, the $1,500. How would you spend that to get your, your Jake Faber sound? Dude, when I you think, said, oh, when you said rig, I was like, okay, I got the perfect pedal board laid out. Like, <laughs> uh, you're not, you got to play it and I got to hear you. I, <laughs> I will give you this. I will give you this. We didn't do it for us. We were a little more ruthless on each other. It is guaranteed probably direct. So. Oh yeah. hundred percent. So, but you need to still, you don't have a guitar. Your Duesenberg got smashed. Right. Dang it. So dude. I know. Board. This sucks. But, right. Yeah. If you, I think I enabled share screen. I'd love to see what you got so far and at least t- talk us through what you got. And then let's, let's find that. Let's pick up that guitar together. The three pick of us. Guitar together. Let's do it. Yeah, let's Can buy a guitar together. Right now? I cannot yet. Okay, here, let me do, let me do this. Uh, share screen. Uh, let's do this. Share. There All right. Is. We're cooking? We're cooking. There we go. Here, yeah. what you got? All right, so we got we to gotta go back to the drawing board. Uh, gonna... <laughs> Sucks. Um, God dang it. Okay, so I'm definitely going stomp for amps and okay. delay and reverb. It's like 100%. I know that, like, literally, if everything failed, I could, like, walk in and just go, like, all right, great. I'm good to go. You know, yeah, and I'll be just fine. That's a good uh, choice. Actually, yeah. as a matter of fact, we're gonna shake this thing up, boys. Hold on a second. Ooh, yeah. Phew. Say you got a tuner in the stomp too, so. Yeah, that's true. All right, so got that, and I could, you know, I just make it work, and I would yeah. go like stereo. I would just go like mono, whatever. There's actually a fun thing. There was a time that my board was like in. I think someone was working on it or whatever, and I couldn't use it. I had my King of Tone and a HX Stomp, and I just threw a patch together that day, and I was like, I'm questioning everything because it sounds nuts. 100%. I got, like, more compliments on that to- than, like, most times. <laughs> like, all my That's- guys that I was playing with, they were like, dude, you sound insane. And I'm like, I know. I don't get it. Like, it's so weird. That's amazing. Yeah. So I know I would be so comfortable. It would be like, man, this sucks, but I can dial something in really quickly and be fine. Okay. Um, but I would free it up because I, I have a strong conviction that that just the dynamic stuff in here and in stomp is just kind of lacking. Yeah. Uh, it just always feels so flat. So I tell a lot of guys, if you can throw a preamp pedal and a overdrive pedal and really a compressor before the stomp, you're cooking with oil. Like it's going to yeah. sound off. Awesome. Um, but so I would have a drive. I think, uh, and man, I just, this is one that I was like digging for. I was digging for like a dual channel overdrive. And uh, I actually just, since I've kind of been on my ODR one kick lately, um, <laughs> I've been kind of doing some research and the Paisley is a loosely based off of an ODR one. With Those are so of, cool. Yeah, man. Like, and I mean, Frank, let's be honest. Like if it's good enough for Brad Paisley, it's probably, yeah. good, enough so, for, like, it's probably yeah. good enough. And Brad Paisley is like an insane <laughs> guitar player. Yeah, he's yeah, so he's good. Our God. Yeah. He's the man. So it's just like, Hey, if it's got his name on it, I'm probably going to like it. And yeah. I love ODR ones. I love how they feel. Um, so it's just kind of like, Hey, I think that would work really well, but gosh, dang it. Now I got to find a new freaking guitar. Right. <laughs> so, and so let's, we got nine fifty. All right. Let's, uh, oh, let's and the off. only rule is it has to be in stock and it can't be used. All right. Great. Gosh, dang it. This is really yep. Cool. Let's go this way. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Also in that regard, I just saw that your Paisley is back ordered. Oh, that gum it. <laughs> you gotta go play today. <laughs> oh, oh, <no. laughs> that sucks, dude. I hate this game. All right, it's hard, go. man. It's really hard. We probably spent. We had to cut some of ours out because it took us so long. And it just yeah. all right. Here we go. Let's go. Let's set a price range. Let's go two hundred, three hundred bucks. Uh, let's look for like uh, that will not work for me. Uh, 
I can always tell if somebody has a gear problem by how quickly they navigate Sweetwater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the more comprehensive you are at that, the worse off you are. Yeah, right. So I, for me, I would just I would go with the dual, with the dual channel situation. Um, it would just be it would be very helpful for me in that setting, uh, at least to kind of go like, all right, at least I have a boost in an overdrive. You know what I mean? And right. uh, actually, I think you can even filter it a little more. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I'm wrong. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's keep on digging. Just Let's get that a... diesel pedal. <laughs> Ooh, this would be fun. Oh, oh that'd be cool. Three, oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. So you got a little boost. Uh, oh, yeah, it's dual channel and a boost. Is that? No, it's just dual channel. Oh, that's fun. It is yeah. fun. We it's like the it. same price as the Paisley, too, so. Same price to the Paisley. Let's put a let's put a little dog ear right there. Let's just remember that one, boys. Don't forget it. Uh, <laughs> on internet, what do we got? Oh, perfect. That's the option right there. There you go. Yeah. Add to cart. Yeah, because I mean, this is like, uh, from my understanding, this is essentially like a, their king of tone clone. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so that would work perfectly for me. Uh, <laughs> and you don't have to wait four years for it. Right. Which, yeah. dude, I I have a king of tone and I freaking love it. But I did not. I did not wait for it. If you know what I'm saying, <laughs> it's, you know, it's four years or a thousand dollars. Take paid, your pick. I, you know, I actually, I got, I my, uh, I got hooked up on my birthday last year. I just got so much cash for some reason. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I I looked up and I was like, Yo, I have enough for a king of tone. <laughs> there you go. Nice. And I love it. Um. So all right. So let's see. So I'm looking for about five hundred bucks, right? Probably. Right around, yeah, I think like right around five hundred bucks. Uh, maybe four fifty. Let's go there. Let's yeah, do... give you a little wiggle room just in case. What uh, do you have like a body shape you prefer for guitars? I know that doesn't super matter, but just in terms of like comfort, yeah, is there? I think in this setting, like a, a telly would just be just fine. You know what sure. I mean? Like, yeah, it's kind of like a. It would. <laughs> I, I I love tellies. I don't currently own one. Yeah. Uh, but like, I would go man in a pinch. I would just pick a telly because I I. Hold on, let's see where we at. Definitely none of these. I would not get a dinky, hundred percent no. Um, <laughs> man, oh, that green SG looked kind of sick, actually. That's kind of cool looking. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got stoner rock written all over it. Yeah. yeah. Buzz your girlfriend. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Buzz your girlfriend. Uh, for some reason. All right, let's do this just for kicks and giggles, and to give myself a little challenge. Uh, can I change strings? At least, can I at least have that? That I think, oh, I yeah, think they yeah. feel really bad. They hit the back of your car. They're going to give you a free pair of strings. 100%. All right, let's do this one. Let's just go with uh, add Plex Pro for $300 on a Squire. No thanks. Uh, <laughs> that's commitment to a brand if you got $300 for a Plex on a Squire. I mean, the saddles are lacking and that bridge plate's going to sound real bad. But like, you know, if you throw, I would throw like Elixir 11, 11s on there. And it mm -hmm. would um, all right, so let's go view cart before it's yours. Make it yours. Mm, no, that's pretty. Oh, that's actually pretty sweet. Yeah. Can I have my? Can I have my uh, like music nomad stuff with me? Can I like? Did that make it in the car wreck? The what? Like all my setup stuff. Yeah, Ooh. that made it. Yeah, that was in the backpack so in the that's... front seat. Perfect. We're yeah. good. Then. We're fine. Boys, look at that. There you go. Couple bucks hey. to spare. Anything else you want to throw in? You get a compressor. You can get that JHS Series Three compressor. I could do that, or but it's kind of fun to play without a compressor. That's kind of fun. Mm. Uh, no, I think I'll I, at this point I'll take the hundred bucks and I'll go like you know, drown my sorrows in some coffee and some food. Or something. <laughs> there you go. You know, at the I'll, Sweetwater I'll, Cafe. I'll buy a nice dinner. I'll buy a steak and I'll, yep. I'll be fine with that. Um, but yeah, I think that would just work just fine. Again, like I said, man, like I could just crush the HX yeah. comp. It would I, I know that pedal so well. Like yeah. I could I could probably program a patch like that's I'm super happy with in like twenty minutes. Okay. Like easily. <laughs> and then this the, I would just like kind of based on our discussion earlier, like I could just make this work. Even if there yeah. were things about it. Because the thing about like things like overdrives that I, I feel like guys kind of don't understand is like just eq like and really yeah. how to use it and how to dial in gain right and all that stuff and like 
you get the EQ right and you dial in the, the volume in the game properly, it's like you really can make anything sound good. It's just using right. your ear of like, oh, there's too much low end. Great. Turn down the low end. Or if it's just a tone knob, awesome. Turn it to the right and it brightens. Right. The there's yeah. just so many ways you can just make an overdrive work. But I so, think I've heard good stuff about this. So I would I would stick to it and then I'd be happy with that. So I think I have to I, – I, this is awesome. I love this. Yeah, I do too. But I think I have to push now the other direction and push you the way John and I went. But what if you can't pick a modeler? Oh, oh no! Don't do this to me, dude. <laughs> I, that's, is, I think it's impossible. I well, we I I had a what did I have? I had an AC10, like a Vox a, AC10 tube amp. I had a Line Six Catalyst. Oh gosh! All right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it won't even make you go through all the pedals we'll just go i just want to know what amp you'd, you'd pick i'll give you a break there all right uh man i probably get like a what's even out there right now you know, yeah blues that's juniors like, blues juniors are hard to find for like they're like 650 or something blues juniors are 650 right now i, I think so yeah. yeah they're expensive what? right now bro that's crazy dude that's crazy let's look in the 300 to 500 grade. This is so bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the AC10 that I picked for mine was like 400 bucks or something. Uh, okay, so there's two of them I'm going to tell you that are hidden gems right now. So this is like they've talked about it a lot in like the Andrews channel. Oh, okay. the the Bujera. Oh, those have Bujera always stuff. been little hidden. Yeah, hidden they're hidden gems. gems. It's all tube. They're awesome sounding amps for their price point. Oh. Um, yeah, awesome little amp. The Lion 6 Catalyst has been crazy, and the Boss Katana. I mean, oh. the Katana is a tried and true. Can't go wrong with the Katana. Really? It sounds good? I think so. I think like, I have a guy I mean, who played on my former worship team that I was on, and he had a Katana, and it's just what he could afford, and it sounded great. I'd, I'd say considering it's all solid state, like it's, I'd say it's as, probably as good as solid state's going to get for, sure. <laughs> for yeah. that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but modeling has come a really long way. So, I mean, yeah. even if I, if if this scenario, God forbid, dude, if this ever happens. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting paid enough to go where you can't go. Oh, direct, I think. Man, I couldn't, dude. All my best friends right now, if they watch this, they'd be like, you just, uh, you would unravel. Like, I would, I would absolutely unravel. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't do it. But, you know, God forbid this happens. But, God yeah, forbid. I mean, like, I, I could make this work. Like, this would be fine. 200 watts? Oh my gosh. Dude, and they're loud. I mean, I they're loud. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think line six, if I remember correctly, they measure their wattage in tube wattage. So it's not 200 solid states, 200 tube watt. Jeez, dude. So that's that thing's cooking. Yeah, you're getting punished. Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah, I, would, I think, yeah, I think the very first like tube amp I ever had was one of the Fender Pawn Shop series. It was like the oh, Rampart yeah. or something. It's uh -huh. this little two-channel amp, had a hot and a cold, and then just had a hot and a cold volume. That's it. Oh, wow. But like it was like a nine-watt amp, and that thing would scream, man. Like wow, it was nine tube, like nine watts in a tube amp are crazy. I remember yeah. when they put out that Excelsior amp. Back Dude, then. my buddy in college had one of those. Uh, yeah. They are so cool. Those, I have one of those. Yeah, they're super sick. They were. I never got one, but I I think around that era I had an AC15, yeah. uh, kind of right at the like beginning of the the bad AC15 era and the right. bad AC15 era. Like I had one of those. <laughs> yeah, not, they. I mean, it worked really well. I put good tubes in it, and you know, again, yeah. like you, you can make it sound fine. Um, but like it was, dude. It was like once I heard the bad cat, I was like, it's it's game. Yeah. Game. Like, yeah. It's game. So. I think I think we did it, boys. I did. I'm gonna have you stop sharing. I'm gonna hit that button. All right. So before you leave, I did want to ask you just to plug your cohort and tell me tell us a little bit about it, just in case anyone's interested in that or wants to know what it yeah. is. Just so we have yeah. a general idea and people can know what you're doing. Man, thanks for thanks for that. I uh, so I am partnering and starting a company with my one of my best friends and some of my best friends uh, called the Way of Worship. Um, our goal is to align um, heart and hand you will mm -hmm. so line our heart with the way of jesus and align our hands and what we do and the skills that we have with the way of jesus and that's what we're that's what we're aiming for and as part of that organization i lead cohorts uh which are small groups for learning and right now i'm leading two and i am super pumped to say that i have 13 guys and i sold hey. them out so that's i awesome. sold out my cohorts i am so freaking pumped about that um 
and uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. We've got some cool stuff in the works with uh, with Way of Worship, and um, yeah, man, I'm super 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 thrilled. It's been it's been awesome. That's is super- there like a is there like a social media thing that they could follow, like the co- people could follow the cohort and stuff? The Way of Worship. Way and of Worship. Also, right. just fake jobber. Like I talk about it and, and yeah. all that stuff. So yeah. We'll, we'll be uh this cohort ends in may or june um yeah. and uh you know is, if you guys are following along and you're interested in that we'll definitely start pushing around spring probably nice April, start pushing for sign that'd be awesome yeah yeah we have a small audience but if we can help promote it at all definitely keep us in the loop yeah i'll get all your i'll get all the info for it after we're done that we can yeah. put up Oops. I'd love to check back in with you, like you know, later on when that one's over, and see how the first one, round, first yeah, round went, and stuff like that. Get an update on it. That'd be sweet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be the next season, I think, of Worship Gear. We want to also make sure we're talking about that part as well, like how to do well for your team. I mean, that's a big passion for both of us. Patrick works at a church. I've worked at churches for yeah. ten years up until recent, and so it's like yeah. that's a big passion for us too. So it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, man. Awesome. Well, man. Sweet. So fake Jaybird, where they can follow you. You heard all that. We're going to put all in the notes. Dude, I have to correct you. It's fake job. Jobber. Jobber. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, okay. I was going to say it wrong over and over. <laughs> yeah, I've been called worse things. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, me too. <laughs> but, dude, thank you so much for being on today. Uh, hope to have you on again soon or at some point, and then uh, we'll stay in touch. But until then, guys, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Follow us at John H. Kroll, Fake Jobber, Veritones, and uh, Worship Gear Co. on Instagram. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. See you, boys.